We turn now to an update on the whistleblower who helped expose the Bush administration's warrantless domestic eavesdropping program. He made what's been called the biggest leak of the Bush era. In 2004, Justice Department attorney Thomas Tam called the New York Times and told them about the National Security Agency's secret program to intercept private email messages and phone calls of U.S. residents without a court warrant. Based in part on his tip, The Times went on to expose what many believe was a highly illegal program. The Times even won a Pulitzer Prize for its reporting. Meanwhile, Thomas Tan lost his job. The FBI raided his house and began monitoring his phone calls and email. Up until this week, he faced possible arrest for disclosing classified secrets. Well, on Tuesday, Politico broke the news that the Justice Department has dropped its long-standing criminal investigation of Tam. Asked to comment on the story, Attorney General Eric Holder told reporters, quote, these matters get reviewed by career lawyers in the department. They look at these matters in an exhaustive fashion and reach what I think are appropriate conclusions. The relatively quiet end to the investigation into Tam's warrantless wiretapping leak marks a sharp contrast to the controversy his tip generated during the second half of the Bush administration about whether the government had overstepped its legal authority in response to the 9-11 terror attacks. Thomas Tam joins us now from Washington, D.C. We welcome you back to the program. Well, thank you for inviting me. Talk about what this means and what this investigation, your uh, ouster from the Justice Department, uh, what all of this has meant for your life over the past five years? Well, I mean, it, it's a relief uh, that the uh, long ordeal is over. Um, unfortunately, I, I ruined my career. I uh, loved working at the Justice Department, particularly in the uh, criminal division. Uh, it was an honor to represent the people of the United States. Uh, as a result of that, I'm, I <clears throat> incurred significant legal fees, uh, which I still uh, owe. I borrowed money to, for those legal fees. And, um, you know, really, uh, probably the biggest impact was on my family. I wasn't home when the, when the 18 FBI agents uh, ran through my house, uh, but my wife was and my kids were. My kids were awakened in their beds by strangers wearing guns. Uh, and I don't think that uh, they will ever get over that. Uh, my wife doesn't feel the same way uh, about her house, doesn't feel as safe in her house. Could you go back, just chronologically take us through this? Your case did not get a tremendous amount of attention, certainly through the years. So talk about what you found out when you were working in the Justice Department. When you made that phone call to The Times and what, how this raid took place, but start at the beginning. Well, it, it really uh, kind of started uh, uh, with me after 9-11. Um, in the criminal division, we had the opportunity to talk to the families of the 9-11 uh, attack, and I decided that I wanted to try and go after uh, the real bad guys, the people that had attacked our country. And so I went to this uh, office uh, where you were, uh, where we did legal uh, wiretapping and electronic surveillance approved by a court to try and uh, gain intelligence about foreign, uh, foreign agents. Um, I was there only a short period of time. Um, it was right at the start of the Iraq war and fear permeated that office. Uh, and it was, uh, I think, for the first time I understood what, what fear, uh, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself actually meant. And as I participated in that, I, I realized that there was a separate track of cases, about 10 percent of the cases, that did not go through the normal process, that went to just one particular judge, and only the attorney general could sign those warrants, which was different from all of the other cases that I handled. And, uh, and I remember a, a, a lawyer that was senior to me saying that uh, she didn't want to know what this, what this program was. She just assumed it was illegal. Uh, and so I just uh, started, it was kind of an educated guess. And, um, you know, it's interesting to say that I made a phone call to the New York Times. I actually was, a, it was a series of phone calls before I became comfortable even uh, talking to them. And then it was a series of meetings. Uh, during which I said, I think that there's something illegal going on. I'm not sure what it is. And they revealed to me that they had other sources that were also saying the same things uh, from the NSA and the CIA. 
uh, and they told me that I was their only source uh, from the Department of Justice. Now, when uh, when this happened, the, the government was able to get the New York Times to withhold pr uh, publishing those articles for quite some time. So did they, during that period, know that you were a source uh, already uh, to the to the Times? No, I don't believe so. Uh, I, you know, the Times, as I understood it, was ready to run the story in the fall of 2004. Uh, and the story didn't run for over a year. Uh, and I remember being really frustrated with that. I felt I had put a lot on the line. Uh, I thought it was really important for the American people to know uh, uh, that what I, what I viewed as a, an abuse of executive authority. In fact, uh, I believe it was illegal, uh, and clearly illegal. And uh, eventually met with the New York Times reporters again, and one of the reporters said to me that they were frustrated as well, that that the White House said that the New York Times would have blood on their hands if they ran the story. And it's my understanding that uh, uh, James Risen basically told the publisher of The Times that he was going to publish his book, which would reveal the story, uh, if they did not publish the articles. And so eventually, I guess, uh, uh, in December of 2005, they ran the story. And what's significant there, that date, December of 2005, after holding on to this for almost a year, that's the month after the election that elected George W. Bush. That's correct. So when did the raid take place? And if you didn't hand over documents, what is it that they were looking for? Well, Amy, that's that's a really good question. Uh, in retrospect, you know, if they had come to my door and knocked, I would have allowed them in because I didn't have any documents, secret documents, classified documents in my house, on my computer, anywhere. I didn't hand over anything uh, to The New York Times. Uh, I didn't reveal any sources or methods. Uh, it happened in August, on August 1st of 2007. Uh, and as I said, uh, some neighbors saw uh, agents uh, had drawn guns as they were approaching my house. Um, I think personally that it was uh, designed to intimidate me, uh, to maybe, maybe the thinking was that I would realize that the whole weight of the federal government was coming down on me and that I should do, quote, the right thing. Uh, and, and indeed, within a couple of days, uh, they spoke to my lawyer and offered me a plea, which would have involved um, going to jail. And uh, I told my lawyer I didn't think I had done anything wrong. Now, they then subsequently began to uh, tap your own phone and uh, uh, follow your own emails. Did they, did, uh, have you ever been able to figure out how the government uh, knew that you were the whistleblower? Well, um, yes. I, I, you know what? And I, I honestly, I thought all along that I would eventually be revealed. I thought what would happen was similar to what happened in the Judy Miller's uh, case for the another reporter for the Times, that they would subpoena the reporters to the grand jury, and that they would not, you know, they would exercise their First Amendment rights and try and protect their sources. But I, I had told Eric Lechblau that that he would not have to go to jail for me; that he could reveal. Uh, his source, if in fact he was subpoenaed to the grand jury, and that's why I think that you know I never expected that they would raid my house, uh, and um, I I communicated with a person up on the hill uh, who, when I s determined that I thought something was going on that was illegal, and I went up and talked to that person on the hill, and said I want to know if Congress knows what what is happening. If Congress has approved this, a co-equal branch of the government, then I'll just walk away. And uh, that email to the person on the Hill was on my government—I used my government email. And, uh, you know, that's not my property. That's the property of the government. And, and the FBI uh, looked at that email and went and talked to that person that I talked to. And, and I believe that's how they determined that I was the person who, who had spoken to The Times. And why, Thomas Tam, was this so important to you? Why was it so critical that you would risk your career in doing this? Well, I, I, the oath that I took was to preserve and protect the Constitution of the United States against enemies foreign and domestic. And, um, you know, it's my belief that, that we are a stronger country because of our Constitution and because of our democratic 
uh, institutions like the courts and the Congress, as well as uh, as the presidency. And I, I, I honestly thought I had an ethical obligation to to talk to somebody about what I thought uh, was an illegal uh, abuse of executive authority. In fact, when I was working at, at the Department of Justice in OIPR, uh, my boss said that if you don't want to sign one of these affidavits, if you're afraid to put your name on these affidavits, uh, that he would put, he would sign his name. And, and that just sent up a red flag. I said I would look at these documents and say, what is in here that might be suspicious? And there wasn't anything. And um, so I, I really thought it was my duty. And, and since the uh, the uh, the raid on your house, uh, what happened uh, afterwards? Your uh, your leaving uh, the Justice Department and the uh, what you've been subjected to since? Well, as you asked earlier, I I, I was in contact with one of the colleague at a former office, and they informed me that that the FBI had been there and they knew where I had gone to lunch, and with whom I had gone to lunch the week before. Uh, they knew uh, that I had sent an email saying that I wasn't going to attend a, a, an office function. Uh, and, um, you know, obviously, I had to hire a lawyer. Uh, I was I, I tried to set up a defense fund uh, and was really pleased that a lot of people did help uh, in that area and, uh, and made some contributions so I could pay uh, the lawyer. And, and as I said, it, it ruined my career. I, I uh, I'm in financial dire straits, uh, and uh, it really it, it shook up my family. But um, you know, as I said, it's it's a big relief that I'm no longer under that cloud. And why do you think that the Justice Department has dropped this investigation now? I just want to clarify. Um, you made the call in spring of 2004 to The Times. They didn't publish the story for about a year and a half, so it was actually well after the 2004 election. It was like a year after the election um, that they finally right. published the story, though they had the story well before the election. Right. Um... I'm sorry. So what was your question? The question is, why do you think the Justice Department has now dropped? In oh. fact, you were alerted many months before. It's just that you happened to mention this at a party that Politico picked it up <laughs> now. Is that right, that you are not going to be? Right. That, that is right. I'm, I think the reason is because the lawyers at the Department of Justice realized that what was being done was, in fact, illegal. I mean, it's very difficult to prosecute someone uh, such as myself, uh, recognizing that what I did was reveal something that was against the law. And um, I also believe that it would have been a problem uh, proving the case against me, because President Bush, the day after that article was published, basically uh, acknowledged that the program existed. In fact, he, he almost seemed like he was proud of the fact that there was warrantless wiretapping, uh, you know, to, to uh, supposedly uh, protect uh, the country. And in my opinion, he revealed more classified information uh, than I ever did. And the bottom line is, as we mentioned earlier, I didn't turn over any documents. I didn't reveal any sources. And, and really, uh, the bottom line is, I don't think I ever broke the law. Mm -hmm. well